financial news these days is feeling a little bit overwhelmingly underwhelming. <gasps> the central bank just raised rates by three quarters of one percent and people are losing their collective minds. I mean, come on central bank, at least round that thing up to one percent and make today's coverage a little bit more sexy. Well today, I just want to game out what this rate hike means, starting from the source and then rippling out to the entire economy. With that, let's get started from where the rubber hits the road. At the end of every day, all of the banks come together and compare each other's balance sheets. Oh man, people took 5 million in deposits out of their accounts from your bank, and because of that, you fell out of compliance with reserve requirements. Tell you what, says another banker, I'll give you an overnight cash loan to keep you in compliance at a 5% interest rate. Then all of a sudden another eavesdropping banker from a bit further down the bar jumps up and says, ha, forget that, I can give you a cash overnight loan at 4.5%, gee, a little bit lower. Then Jerome Powell, well, he emerges from the shadows and says, don't listen to those shysters, we at the Federal Reserve will give you that money at an overnight rate of, well, what's it up to now? 2.25%. You see, the Federal Reserve wields so much power in the economy because they consistently undercut all of the competing offers for these overnight loans. Now that means that they essentially set the benchmark rate for all the cash in the economy. So alright, the commercial bank declines the offers of all the other banks and decides to go with the Federal Reserve's overnight money offer instead. All of a sudden, we find ourselves with a rate floor for cash. A bank is never going to spend more than 2.25% for you to deposit your money. Because at that rate, why not just go with Jerome? You already got an account with him. So now that we've seen the point of impact, let's start getting to the ripples. As that Jerome Powell lowball offer rate starts to go up, well, all of a sudden your money depositing into a bank starts to become more and more valuable to the bank. Huh. The Fed is going to charge us 5% for an overnight loan. Well, I'll give your savings get 2% interest to avoid all of that expensive noise. High federal funds rates, great for savers. Well, then you got another ripple that's just a little bit further out. All right, so banks are tapping into these federal funds pipelines for cash at a said interest rate. When that interest rate starts going up a little bit, all of a sudden they're looking at this new higher rate. Then they're looking at the person on the other side of the lending window, then back at that new higher rate again and saying, hold on there partner, I'm pretty sure a lot more in interest is being paid by me for this cash than yesterday. And so, well, if they're going to raise my interest rate by three quarters of a percent, I'm going to raise your interest rate by one whole percentage point. Your bank's costs go up and you bet they're going to pass it all along to you. Now this is why we're seeing an immediate increase in all sorts of bank rates, from mortgage rates to credit card rates to student loans, and of course all other activities where financial institutions are lending out cash to the public. Now of course the ripples don't end there, they keep spreading out to society at large. Suddenly everybody who needs money, whether it's from a bank or investors, is having to compete with these new rates. Where are investors going to put their private money? The banks are suddenly paying a higher interest rate, so if say the United States federal government wants to start borrowing some money, they're going to have to raise their rates as well, competing with all these other rising rates to open those sweet, sweet wallets. Now all of a sudden, this raises the rates for all sorts of people approaching public investors, hat in hand, and asking for some cash. You see, if America is suddenly paying slightly more on their loans, well, Argentina and other default risk entities are going to have to significantly bump up their interest rates to attract attention and compete for funding. Now this is why across the board, not just with the banks, we're seeing risky tech investments in developing countries' rates go up a lot. From an investor's perspective, this is great. Look at all these people competing for my money. More bang for your buck. But from a borrower's perspective, not so much. 
So you're probably watching this episode so far and thinking to yourself, huh, what a weird kind of random, maybe cool thing for the federal government to be doing. Why? The answer is a reprioritization of fighting inflation over pushing growth. You see, what is inflation but a devaluing of a currency? If people across the board are suddenly willing to spend a lot more for access to your dollar, well that might cause individuals to quite literally be reevaluating the currency they have. People want to spend a lot for this dollar, maybe you'll put off buying that TV. Now for a while their cash was cheap, the Federal Reserve had rates pegged between free and a quarter of a percent interest. Banks are saying, sure, I'll lend you some money. The government set her interest rates at free cash. Company can't make a profit? Borrow it. Want to buy a house? <laughs> Take out a loan. Whatever you do though, don't save your money. Banks, well they aren't going to pay you anything for that cash. It's already floating everywhere interest free. During this period, cash was flowing out of the banks and into the public. But now the government is trying to reverse that flow. Whoa, 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 don't spend your money, save it. Less money we have bidding up the cost of items, less inflation. All of a sudden the conversation is, wanna buy a house? Maybe don't. Got an unprofitable business? Don't worry, you won't for long. Cut spending or get profitable. No more loans to fill in those budget gaps. Of course, this lack of private deficit spending and push towards savings will do about as much to combat inflation as it will to slow economic growth. Now at the end of the day, the Fed is making a bit of a gamble. They're hoping that, because the labor market is starting from such a strong place, it will be able to slow the economy enough to begin driving inflation lower without hurting it so much that it spurs a wave of job losses. So that's exactly how slightly bumping up the Federal Reserve's overnight lending window rate to banks is causing a ripple effect raising rates all across the entire globe. A rising tide floats all boats, but if you don't have a boat, hope you're good at treading water until the tide goes back out again. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put on my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, why not join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.